Hi, I'm Christopher Mitchell, author of Using the TI-84 Plus, and I'm here today with part three of Using the TI-84 Plus CE. In this part, I'll be teaching you how to use variables, lists, and matrices on your TI-84 Plus CE graphing calculator. As in the previous two parts of this video series, all of these lessons apply to the TI-84 Plus C Silver Edition, and most also apply to the TI-83 Plus and TI-84 Plus calculators. Let's start with variables. Just like in algebra, variables are single letters that store numbers. You can think of variables as a container with a value inside. On your calculator, for example, the X key prints the X variable. You saw X in part two of these videos where I showed you how to graph. In order to put a number into a variable, you use the STO or STORE key at the lower left of your calculator. For example, if I wanted to put the value 3 into x, I would press 3, STO, and then x. Your calculator prints 3, right arrow, x, indicating that it's going to store the number 3 into x. Anytime I want the number 3, I can now use x. For example, if I just type x and press enter, I get 3, because that's the value of x. I could type 2x, which is 2 times x, and I should get 6. I could do something complicated like x squared plus 3x plus 1. 3 squared is 9. 3 times 3 is also 9, so 9 plus 9 is 18, plus 1 is 19, so the answer should be 19. Your calculator has 27 variables, a through z and theta. You can see each of these variables in green text above the keys on your calculator. As you learned in part one of these videos, to access that green text, you press alpha and then the button with green over it. So if I want the A variable, I press math because math has a small green A over it. If I wanted something like P, I could press alpha and then eight, which has P over it. Let's say I wanted to find the volume of a box. Let's say this box has a width of three, a height of four and a length of five. Because the width is three, I will store three into the variable w for width. Next, I'll store four into the height, h. And finally, I'll store five into the length, l. Notice that after each store statement, I have pressed enter, which instructs the calculator to complete that store. Now I have three in w, four in h, and five in l. To calculate the volume of this box, I know that it's the width times the height times the length. So I can press W times alpha H times alpha L. When I press enter, the calculator will multiply W times H times L to give you the volume of the box, which is 60 or three times four times five. Your calculator, as I showed you previously, can also do implicit multiplication. So I can type W H L to also get 60 the volume of the box. The next thing we should look at are lists. If variables are single containers that store a number, then you can consider lists as a series of buckets, each of which holds one number. For example, your calculator can have lists named L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, and L6. You might have encountered these in trying to deal with stats plots before, but if you haven't, they are things that you can type by pressing second and then the key corresponding to L1 through L6. If I try to use L1, you can see that it currently has six items in it. However, on your calculator, you might not have anything in your list yet. So the first thing we need to do is define how big our lists are. We'll use L1 for all these examples and say we want to make our list three elements long. To do this, we type three store, then we can't do store to L1 because L1 holds a series of numbers, not just one number. In order to set the length of a list, you use the dim or dimension command. To get to the dim command, press second, then stat for the list menu, move the cursor over to the ops menu and press the down arrow twice to get to dim and press enter. Again, that's three, store, second, stat, move over to ops, 
and choose Dim. Now you specify the list that you want to set the dimension of. I said we'll use L1, so this is 3 store dim L1. The calculator prints out 3, confirming that it set the length of L1 to 3. Now if I try to print L1 again by pressing second 1 and enter, you see that L1 is now 3 elements long. Now you'll want to put some contents into L1. Just for fun, I'll use L1 to store the dimensions of that box I just mentioned with dimensions 3, 4, and 5. There's two ways that I can do this. One way is to store to each element of L1 individually. First, I'll store 3, 2, and then L1, parentheses, 1. What does this mean? This tells the calculator, store 3 into the first element of L1. When I press Enter, the calculator confirms that it has stored 3 to the first element of L1. I'll then store 4 into L1, parentheses, 2, the second element of L1. And finally, I'll store 5 into the third element of L1. Now, if we did this correctly, L1 will contain 3, 4, and 5. So if I simply press second and then 1 again, I get L1, and I press enter, the calculator prints out 3, 4, and 5, just as we expect. The other way that you can set a list is to explicitly enter all of the items in the list. And you can see that your calculator displayed the list contents with these curly braces. To enter a list for the calculator to store, you'll also use these curly braces. Let's say that I made my box a little bigger. Maybe I combined eight boxes together, so I have a six by eight by 10 box now. If I press second, parentheses, which has a little curly brace above it, I'll get an opening curly brace. And I press six comma, eight comma, 10 and then I can optionally close those curly braces. This is a list three elements long, containing list one is six, list element two is eight, and list element three is 10. Now I can store this directly to L1 without having to specify an element number afterwards. When I press enter, you can see the cal calculator confirms that L1 now contains six, eight, and 10. Let's find the volume of L1. We can do L1, one, which is the value of the first element of L1 times the second element of L1. I made a mistake there, that should be L1, times the third element of L1. The answer should be six times eight times 10 or 480. Another thing we can do is use one of the several commands available in the list menu, second stat, to perform math on a list. You can find the minimum value, the maximum value, the mean value, which is the average of all the items in the list, the median, the sum, the product of every element in the list, and even the standard deviation and the variance of all the items in the list. We want to find the volume of a box with dimensions stored in the list, so we'll use the product, or prod, of L1. This will multiply every element in L1 and return that product. Again, it's 480, just as we'd expect. Finally, let's talk about matrices. If a list is a series of buckets that can contain values, say a one-dimensional set of numbers, then a matrix is a two-dimensional set of numbers. What exactly does that mean? Let's look at the matrix menu for a bit of a clarification. If we press second and then x to the negative one, which has matrix written above it, we'll get to the matrix menu. It says names, math, and edit. Let's try editing a matrix. I see that the one selected there is A, little square braces mean matrix, so I'll press enter. First, it's asking me how big I want the matrix to be. Now, I said that a matrix is two-dimensional, which means that it has a height, a number of rows, and a width, or the number of columns. Let me set matrix A to have three rows and then two columns, and I'll press enter there to make that take effect. You can see that this has three rows and two columns now, and in the matrix editor, I can edit the values of each of these elements. Let's say I set the second row, first column, to one. I'll set the first row, second column, to two. And I'll set the third row, second column, to three. Now the, the items in my matrix are zero, one, and zero in the first column, and two, zero, and three in the second column. How can I use this on the home screen? Well, if I press second and then X to the negative one for matrix once again, I'll get the matrix menu again, names, 
A is three by two, as we just defined. So I can press enter to paste just the name of the matrix A to the home screen. The calculator will print out the numbers that I just put into that matrix, zero, one, and zero in the first column, two, zero, and three in the second column. Just like lists, you can access single elements of the matrix. So for example, I can access row two, column one. How did I do that? Well, again, I went to second matrix. I selected the name of matrix A, and then in parentheses, I put first the row and then the column of the element that I want in parentheses. If I press enter, I get the value of the matrix at that particular spot. Unfortunately, unlike lists, you can't define matrices with your own names. If you look through the names tab on the matrix menu, you'll see that there are only 10 matrices, A through J, and those are the only matrices that are available. Also, new on the TI-84 plus CE, you can only have up to 400 elements in a matrix. So you could have a 40 by 10 matrix, but you couldn't have a 40 by 11 matrix. Let me show you two more things you can do with matrices on your calculator. The first one is to easily enter matrices on the home screen. To do this, press alpha and then F3 or zoom. This will bring up a little context menu on the home screen that lets you enter a matrix of any given size from one by one up to six by six. To use the example I've been using so far, I'll select three rows and I'll keep two columns and press enter on okay. This will bring up a little template that has six spaces for me to type in values. And if I use the same matrix as before, I can put one, two, and three inside my matrix. When I press enter, the calculator will just echo back this matrix because I haven't really asked it to do any math with it. Finally, just like with lists, you can do math on matrices. To find these operations, press second and x to the negative one to once again go into the matrix menu, arrow over to the math tab, and you can see different operations for working with matrices. For example, at the top is determinant, the next one is transpose, and there are many other options for manipulating matrices. You can find details of what all of these different commands do inside using the TI-84+, available on Amazon in bookstores and other good places where you might find books. Let's try finding the, the determinant of a matrix. So I'll press determinant, and let's try using what we just learned in order to enter a matrix on the home screen. So I'll press alpha, zoom again to get the F3 menu or matrix. This time, let me choose a two by two matrix and then move my pointer down to OK and press enter. Now I'm finding the determinant of a two by two matrix. To make it simple, let me put two here and two here. So this is actually what's called a diagonal matrix. When I press enter, you'll find that the determinant is four, which is correct. In physics, you'll often learn that the determinant of a two by two matrix is the sum of the top left and lower right items minus the product of the upper right and lower left items. You can also do things like get an identity matrix. So to show you one more command, I'll go to identity in the matrix menu and choose three. This will give you a three by three identity matrix, which has, it's a diagonal matrix of ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. As always, using the TI-84 Plus second edition has a lot of different information on how you can use variables, matrix, matrices, and lists. On your own calculator, you can try examples like storing a value to x and printing an equation that uses x. There's examples with boxes, just like the ones you saw in this video. There is testing out the Pythagorean theorem, first using just numbers, and then using letters a, b, and c as variables. So a nice little diagram here of lists as a bucket of little containers, a series of little buckets that you can put values into. There's different things you can do with lists, how to manipulate lists, how to perform mathematical operations together on lists, different functions that you can perform on lists. Similarly, there's information on matrices, like things you've learned in this video, um, 
creating new matrices using those home screen tools, performing math operations on matrices, how to use the matrix editor, and some of the different commands that you can use that the matrix menu offers for manipulating matrices. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you next time on part four of these videos. Don't forget to check out chemitech.net if you have any questions on how to use your TI-84 plus CE properly. And of course, if you'd like to use your TI-84 plus CE effectively for math and science, I hope you'll pick up a copy of the book. See you next time.